Normally in my videos I'm talking about the medieval world, very specifically the history of it, what the people are like uh, and the sort of things they might have encountered and done. Uh, this one is going to be a slight exception to that. It is linked. It's about a famous movie sword. In the 1980s there were a series of fantasy movies, the first of which that I'm aware of was called Hawk the Slayer. Hawk the Slayer is one of those movies that I really loved as a boy and was quite influential in inspiring me to read books and to also to study the history of the actual medieval period. Obviously it's a fantasy movie, it's got dwarves and elves and uh, monsters of all sorts. The main character is Hawk, Hawk himself, and he has a sword and I have that very sword here. This is Hawk's mind sword. This was lent to me by the production crew and this is the actual main sword that Hawk used throughout the movie. This is the hero mind sword complete with steel blade. I was quite surprised whilst it's a prop sword this is steel this is actually an old sword blade apparently and it's what I would call a semi-sharp. It's not as sharp as a kitchen knife uh, or properly sharpened kitchen knife, nor is it necessarily as sharp as a real sword would be for fighting, but it is actually quite sharp. You would certainly be able to kill somebody if you hit them with this sword. Now, interestingly, it's not that different to a medieval hand and a half sword. This sword weighs two and a half kilograms or five pounds approximately. That's interesting because it's slightly heavier than an equivalent medieval sword. I noticed that instantly when trying to use it. Um, it does feel heavier than my standard bastard sword, my hand and a half sword that I use on, uh, on horseback. So it is equivalent though, it's quite a heavy sword. It is 36 inches long, the blade from here to there is 36 inches or 91 centimeters. It tapers from about uh, an inch and three quarters here, so about four centimeters to about an inch and a quarter, so about three centimetres at the tip. So it doesn't taper that much compared to a lot of late medieval swords, but obviously this is a fantasy sword, so it doesn't really matter. It has three fullers running down uh, its length. There is one central fuller that goes almost to the tip and two side fullers that go maybe a third of the way down the length. Same on the other side as well. One of the peculiar things about this particular blade, apart from the fact that it has a magic elfin mind stone in this end, is that the balance point of the sword is about on the hilt. Normally, the fighting swords I've used, the balance point, the center of gravity is a little bit further forwards. It's a little further forward here, normally four or six inches from the hilt towards the tip which allows you to have a bit more force downwards when you want to strike something. So it feels, well it's a heavy sword but it actually feels quite light to use and I wonder if that was by design for the actor because you can move it around very very easily if you want to do the fancy stuff which Hawk does. The Mind Stone itself is a little cumbersome, uh, it sort of holds on with this hand shape uh, and it isn't quite as easy to do half sorting techniques. Hawk doesn't use those at all but you could potentially do half sorting techniques with the mind sword but of course one of its major strengths is the fact that it's magic and I have been given some tips on how to actually make the mind sword do what it does in the movies. Of course in the movie the sword can come to life and fly into the hand of the person wielding it if they picture it strongly enough and if they're good I presume. So let me try that, let me see if I can get the mind sword itself to fly into my hand much like Hawk did. I'll step back a little bit and then think of the great sword in your hand and it will be so.
This is Hawk the Slayer's Mind Sword, complete with Elfin Mind Stone. It has been a privilege and an honour to wield it in the woods today. And I do hope that Hawk and Hawk the Slayer continues to inspire a new generation of watchers. And maybe one day we'll have more adventures.